Okay, we're back on the record on State versus Lloyd. He's returned to the courtroom. His attorneys, the state attorney's office is present. For the record, Mr. Lloyd has been fitted with what is called a stun cuff, which is not visible to the jury. Um, the shackles have been removed. Is he wearing regular shoes, guys? What's he got on? He's wearing regular street shoes. So, Mr. Lloyd, you're going to get called to the stand, and you're going to walk to the stand like every other witness in this courtroom. So you're going to walk this way. The deputies are going to direct you. Can you tell him right now which way he's walking? All right, just stand up and walk to the witness stand like any other person when you're called. All right, your attorney will call you to the stand. Once he, um, he can affirm it right there. It's exactly like every other witness. He'll affirm right there and then take the witness stand in front of the jury. Okay, does everybody know what they're doing? Everybody ready? All right, let's bring the jury back in. State recognized presence of the jury? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes. All right. Welcome back, folks. We're ready to proceed. Mr. Lenneman, call your next witness. Defense calls Mark Heath Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd, come on up. Excuse me, I'm speaking to your oh. attorney, Mr. Lloyd. Good afternoon, Good Mr. Afternoon. Lloyd. Good afternoon. Would you introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Mark Keith Lloyd. How old are you, Mr. Lloyd? 44. And uh, where were you born? Ellsworth, South Dakota. How long have you lived in Orlando? All my life. I was born on a military base. My father was in the Air Force. Okay. And um, you were raised in Orlando? Yes, sir. Do you know a woman by the name of Sade Dixon? Yes, sir. Okay. I want to spend some time talking about your relationship with her before, during, and after. Yes, sir. Is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. So I want to take you back and let's try to find a place in time in late, th late 2015, early 2016. Where were you living? Late 2015, early 16, probably at the time at my sister's house. Okay. And uh, were you working at that time? Yes, sir. What kind of work were you doing? I think at that time I had 15, I had four jobs at that time. Okay. I was doing security work at nightclubs, and I was doing personal security for promoters. I was working at Texas Chicken, and I was working at Loomis downtown Winter Park at the dishwasher. Okay. Uh, and did there come a time that you moved away from your sister's house? Yes, sir. Did, did you get your own place? Yes, sir. And when was that? Probably sometime in... It's probably sometime in May or August. I can't remember. Okay, May of August, uh, between May and August of 2016. 2016, yes, sir. Okay. Where was that place located? On 18th Street in Orange Boston Trail. Describe what that place was. It was a, it was a rental. It was a five-bedroom house with three full baths, front yard and backyard. And why did you buy such a, or why did you rent such a big place? At the time, I didn't, I, didn't have, I didn't have anywhere to stay, and I was a convicted felon, so they make it hard for us to, to get back. So don't nobody want to rent to a convicted felon, so I had to try to find a personal, a personal owner. So as I was delivering food for Texas Chicken, I ran across this dude. He was fixing his house, and he was renting it. And I asked him, can I get it? He told me, yeah, and I, I paid it. And and got you, in. Said, you mentioned you were a convicted felon. How many times have you been convicted as a felon? Uh, four times. Okay. And so you get this place because he rents to you. Yes. And um, do you, when you move in, are you moving in alone or do you have other people moving in with you? When I moved in, I was by myself, but I was in a relationship 
with, a, with a, another female, and at the time she had three kids, so it was going to be me and her and her three kids at the time. All right, and what was what her name? Uh, Jacqueline Turner. Okay. And did there come a time when you guys were no longer together? Yes, it did. Okay, when yes, was that? Um, I ended up meeting Sade at the time while I was with Jaquel, but with Jaquel, she smoked cigarettes, and so she couldn't quit. So basically, I ended up starting getting in another relationship because she wouldn't stop smoking cigarettes. All right, and tell me why you were bothered by her smoking cigarettes. Uh, I don't. I don't like women that smoke cigarettes, and basically, I can't hardly breathe around cigarette smoke. So, okay, and it's not healthy for you. Now, during this period of time, what were your thoughts about eating meat? Uh, I don't eat meat. I don't. I don't believe in death. So, and I don't believe in killing God's creation. So, meat. I feel like God made animals just like He make us. We all the same flesh and blood. So, I don't eat flesh and blood. And how long have you had that belief system? I haven't eaten meat in 10 years. Okay. So it goes back 10 years? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you practice any religions? No, I don't believe in religion. Okay. Why? Because religion is mass confusion and separation. I believe God is about unity, and he's not about confusion. So religions just divide people and have people going against each other. Okay. So, you mentioned that you started dating Sade. I want to start from the beginning. How did you meet Sade? Uh, from Facebook. And how did that, can you explain how that, how that happened and how you well, met her? She sent me a friend request, which she sent me a friend request like a lot of females do. So, I go, I, I accept the friend request, I go to the page, make sure the page is real. So I see, I, I like a couple of pictures for all my female friends. I like a couple of pictures. So with Sade, I liked the couple of pictures of her. She had kids. I liked the couple of pictures of her kids. And I, I went off Facebook. So as soon as I went off Facebook, she jumped in my inbox with a private message. And then she's, she's, she's like, you know what all that liking lead to. So I hit her back. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. But I hit her back. I'm like, yeah, you, you cute and you fine and all that. I said, but uh, what else you got to offer into a relationship? What your credit score is? Why'd you ask her what her credit store, score was? Because I'm not, at this time in my life, I wasn't just looking for sex. I wanted kids, and I wanted to be in a relationship so I could try to have kids. And then I wanted a, a female that got other stuff going on. Mr. Lloyd, did, during your, your time, during these two years of 2015, 2014, 2016, did you ever have any problem meeting a woman? No, sir. I did you ever have any problem getting sex from a woman? No, sir. Okay. And so when you say that this was a point in your life that you wanted something more, can you tell me what exactly did you want? I wanted a family. I wanted a family. I, I wanted kids. I wanted my kids to be raised in the house with their mother and father because I didn't get a chance to raise my son and my son and daughter. So I was taken out of their life. So I, I wanted that and, and I missed that. So I, I, I wanted to have that. And when you say you didn't get a chance to raise your son and your daughter, why was that? Because I ended up going, going to prison on a, a, a drug conviction where they came, they came into my girl's house and I was written a room to one of my best friends, my homeboys, uh, twin who's in the stand right, who's in the audience right now. I was written a room to him, and he had drugs in the house. So when they hit the house, I, I didn't know. Me come to find out, they had drugs in the house, even though he accepted his charge, dealing with the federal system. He accepted his charge, but the house was in her name at the time the female I was with. The house was in her name, so. He accepted the charge, but they really, they wanted, they, they really wanted me too. So they was like, I could have went to trial and beat it. But they was telling me, if I go to trial and beat this charge, they're going to put, put it on her too, because the house was in her name, the drugs was out of her house. So in order for them to leave her alone, I, I accepted the drugs too, even though I didn't know it was in there. So I ended up doing like 12 and a half years on that sentence. 
So you did a 12 and a half year sentence in federal penitentiaries around the country. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And when did you get out? I got out. I got locked up in 1998. I got out 2014. Okay. And so when you got out, what were your thoughts about changing your life and making a new life for yourself? When I got out, I got out, got a job. Where I worked at, I knew at the time when I was young, they had stuff called a labor pool. So you got, that's where all the smokers can go at and get jobs to do, do the little jobs and they get their little money to do what they do. So I know I'm a convicted felon and they make it hard for us coming up out the system because they want us to go back in. They don't want us to stay out. So I know that if a smoker can go to get, go get a job, they're not going to stop me. So I, I went where the smokers used to work, work at, and I went and then I started working and what for, for labor pools, uh, doing construction work. Okay. And so when you got out, you, were you on control release with the feds? Yes. Okay. And so you would report? Yes. And I you report every month. Yes, sir. Okay. And then, so let's take you through from 2014 up to 2000, I guess, late 15, early 16. During that period of time, were you always working? Yes, sir. Okay. And were you always reporting? Yes, sir. And were you always doing what they asked you to do? Yes, sir. Okay. And so at some point you were in a halfway house, right? Yes, sir. How long were you in a halfway house? I was in a halfway house for three months, sir. Okay. And then they released you and that's when you went? Because I, I your sister? Went, to, went to my sister's house. Okay. During that period of time, was there a time when you were homeless? Yes, sir. Where were you living? I was living inside my car. Okay. And where would you park the car? I would park the car sometimes in, in, in front of my sister's house, and I'd sleep in the car. I'd just park the car anyway and just sleep in the car. Okay. And at the time, I think I had, I ended up getting two cars. So I had my clothes in one car, and I will work in the other car. Um, and so um, now we're back to 2016. When do you go to work for Texas Chicken? I went to work for Texas Chicken in 2000, uh, I want to say end of 14 or 15, because I'm trying to, probably 14, because in 2014, I ended up getting a, a 2015 Nissan Altima, and I, end, and that, I was using that to also work in, too. Okay, and so what did you do with Texas Chicken? Uh, delivered food, and sometimes worked, worked, worked at the drive through but my main job was uh, uh, deliver food. All right, so people would call in orders and you would deliver the food to them? Yes, sir. Uh, what kind of money were you making from Texas Chicken? In Texas Chicken, I was making $1,000 a week. $1,000 a week? Yes, sir. With your payroll and your tips? With my payroll and my tips. Okay, and how much was your rent that you were paying at the house that you were living in? My rent was 1100 and my lights was close to three or four. Okay, and so after you moved into this house uh, on the 18th, did there come a time when some other people moved in as well? Yes, yes. And uh, who were they? The first person moved in, one of my friends called me, he do subleases, and he said he had this, this female, her name, her name was Little Bit, he had this female and she didn't have anywhere to stay, and she didn't have anywhere to go. He, he was like, do I, do I have anywhere? I'm like, yeah, I was staying in the house by myself, so I'm like, yeah, I, I got a room. She can come stay. She can come stay here. So I had her come stay. I let her stay like the first three or four weeks for free because she didn't have anything. And then she started paying me two hundred dollars uh, every other week. Okay. And did you have other people move in? Yes. Yes. My brother moved in because he. What's your brother's name? Uh, Barry Jacobs. Okay. He moved in. He's a truck driver, so he he's back and forth. He moved in. At first, it was a Spanish lady. She moved in, her and her three kids, they moved in the back room. It was like, I guess you want to call it a, like a townhouse or something. It's a back room where it's a big room and you got the sink, the sink in st inside the room and plus you got a, a bathroom. But that was hooked up to the back of the house and uh, some sp a Spanish lady and her three kids, they, they moved in there. I didn't know her, but somebody came to me and was like, she needed somewhere to stay and I let her come too. All right. 
So, um, did there come a time when your cousin, you heard your cousin Glenn talk about living with you? Did yes, you? yes. Glenn, Glenn came to uh, after my one of my son's friends. He was staying there because my son stayed there one time too before my brother came. I mean, before, uh, before my brother came, but his friend still stayed there. And when he left, it was a room open, and I told Glenn, him and his girl, they can come. Okay. And what was uh, Glenn's um, girlfriend's name? Takora. Okay, and what was her relationship with Sade? She was Sade's friend. Okay. Did, uh, so let's go back to the beginning with Sade. So you met on Facebook. Yes, sir. Did there come a time when you met in person? Yes, sir. Tell the jury how that happened. We talked, we talked, on, we talked for a while. You know, when you become Facebook friends, people will post stuff, you go in there, like it, comment, so it'd be, it's a back and forth thing. So we end up exchanging numbers. We'll, we'll talk, we talk for a minute. And on September the 16th, that's the first day I went, I went and picked her up. Okay. So September 16th of 2016 16. was the first time that you actually met her in person? Yes. No, 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 it wasn't the first time. The first time I picked up, I met her one time because she started working at a, a club that I did security for. Okay. And so you saw her there? Yes, yes, because she called, uh, she called me one, but she went live and she was like, she at the club. And I went, I'm like, where you at? She said, I'm at, I'm at Flash Dances. I'm at Flash. I'm like, man, I work there. She's like, yeah, I'm working there. And come to find out, she had worked there like a week while I was doing security, but I didn't pay, a, I didn't pay her attention because there's, there's a lot of girls in there. And I never mess with none, with none of the girls because I didn't come to work for this. I come to work to work. And if you start dealing with the females, they gonna cause the problem. So I never dealt with any of the girls in the club. Now you, you said live, what, what does that mean? Uh, Facebook live, when you go live and and it's recording, and, and everybody watching, whoever your friend, or if you it, pay public, whoever watched. All right. And is that something that happened quite a bit on your Facebook? That yes. Friends went live? Yes. Yes. Okay. So when, let's go back to when you got out of prison. When did you start Facebooking? As soon as I got out. Okay. And would you say that you Facebooked a lot? Yes. Yes. I was addicted to Facebook. Okay. Um, so you knew who she was, you had met her once before at this club, and now you, you were telling us how you uh, were picking her up. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, she called me. We ended up hooking up, so she was like, come get her. So I, I came to pick her up from my mom's house, and I picked her up. We went out, we hung out, and I just basically, I was just watching to just, just to see what kind of person she was. So when I first picked up, she came out and she had on some shorts, booty shorts. So I'm, I was gonna say something, but I, did, I didn't say anything. So I just let her be her. And I just watched to see what kind of person I was dealing with. Why was that important to you? And what did the booty shorts mean? Because a queen don't dress like that. You're exposing, exposing yourself to the world. I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I wouldn't want my woman doing that. When you see a queen, what do you mean a queen? My sisters. Your sisters, your my, actual biological sisters? My, my sisters, or the, or the good of anybody, any people. My, okay. Not just my biological sisters, my, my sisters, my mothers, my daughters, then my queens, my people. Now, We've known each other for a while. I mean, I've been your lawyer for a while. Yes, sir. Have you referred to people that are not your biological family members as sisters and mothers and daughters? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. In yeah. our conversations. Yes, sir. But when you're talking about that, you're not just talking about your family. You're talking about you consider everybody. Everybody. Okay. And so, tell us what happens. You said she was wearing booty shorts. Yeah, so, so let her be yourself, herself. Tell so, us what happened. So we go out. We go out to clubs. And she, she's drinking. She smokes, and then I, I didn't. I didn't have a problem with the smoking because I smoke when I can, 
But if I don't, I won't. Okay, what are you talking about? What you smoke? Smoke what? Smoke weed. Okay. So were you smoking weed during this period of time? No, I couldn't. I was on probation. Okay. So because you were on probation, you couldn't smoke? Yes, sir. Did you ever smoke while you were on probation? Yes, I did one time, yes. Did you get caught? No, I, I told him. You told him? Yes, sir. And what happened? He just he just told me, don't, don't do it no more. He, he made me start taking a piss test every month. I would just get pissed like every six or nine months. But it, it, was, it was a situation that happened, and I was just feeling some type of way, and I just smoked, and I smoked me a blunt, and I went and told him. All right, and you told him about it? Yes. And once that happened, did you smoke anymore? No. Okay. And so we were talking yes, about- Yes, yes, I, I did smoke one more time. Okay, well, when was that? With Sade. With Sade? Yes. Okay. Was that early on in your relationship, or? No, it was farther, farther in the relationship. Okay. It was farther in the relationship. Uh, we was in front of her mom's house one time, and she wanted me to smoke with her, so I'm like, all right, I'll smoke one time with you, because I don't smoke. So we smoked, and then I guess the weed, the weed today, when I was when I was young, because I I went I went away when I was 22, so I I don't know about all these crazy name crazy name weeds, and but the weed today is too strong to me. So she, I was in the car, I smoked with her, and it had my whole body hurting. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, my whole body was hurt. I'm like, Shade, I'm like, Shade, you got this. I, I, I thought it was a sign from God because if we just doing this to a grown person, what you think is doing to a fetus that's trying to develop a brain? And I know we has cleared some of my memory from my years as a youth smoking weed. So I, I know as a child trying to develop a brain, what is what is doing to a fetus? You, just, you mentioned that you thought it was a sign of God. Yes. How often do you feel that you have signs of God come into your life? I have, them, I have them a lot. A lot? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you remember how far back you remember that those signs had been a part of your life? Yes, sir. How far back? From like, I, like when I was about seven. Seven years old? Yes, sir. All right. And when was it the first time that you felt that there was a sign from God? Dealing with Sade? No, when you were seven. Dealing with, uh, dealing with racism. Well, what do you mean racism? As far as when I was young, so I used to uh, watch Roots, like Roots, Mississippi Burning and stuff like that, and I just watched what was happening. Was, what, what, I just watched what was happening to us. And so... Who's us? Black people. Black people at the time with that, dealing with that situation. And is that something that you felt your entire life? All my life. And if somebody went on your Facebook and read some of the things that you say, would they clearly recognize that that's something that's important to you? Yes, and, and, and some probably some, some probably are going there and, and misinterpret things too. And I also, also I explain things too because I will use the word crackers. If I use the word cracker, that don't mean I'm talking about you because a cracker is any color. A cracker, a cracker. That, that word came from came from slavery days. When the, when, the, when the overseer was cracking the whip, that's where the word cracker come from. But we just use the word cracker, or I'll, anyone use the word cracker loosely, but that's what the word cracker come from. Just like we use nigger loosely, they use cracker loosely, but that don't mean it's, it's, it's racist. But I got white sisters and brothers that I've been raised with slept in the same bed with. So, but I, I explain that to my Facebookers when I go in there, because I, I do use the word cracker. But I explain them to what the word means, where it comes from. So going back to Sade, um, you have the first date, and so what happens as a result of the first date? So 
she she was drinking she was drinking a lot so she was kind of tipsy but she she handles her liquor so she stays the night she stays the night with me so we we sleep in the same bed but I don't try to have sex with her because I don't want to have sex with a person that's under the influence I ain't got to do it to get sex sex come easy so I I waited the next day we got up we showered and the next day we we end up having sex so I pulled out a condom. And then she was like, don't use, don't use it. So I'm like, hold up. I said, don't use it. I'm like, you must commit yourself to me. Because I don't just have unprotected sex with anybody. Like, if I have unprotected sex, I'm considered you my wife. And that's what I believe. So I'm like, you must finna commit to me. And then she was like, she was like, yeah, don't use it. So I, I didn't use it. We had unprotected sex. All right. And is that, did you start seeing her on a regular basis at that point? We, she started basically staying with me off, from, off rip. So from, from that point on, she, she kind of moved in with you? Yes, she was bringing stuff in slowly. All right. And so, um, do you remember the first time that you went to her house? The first time I went to the house when I went and picked her up, but I didn't, I didn't go in. That was the first time? Yeah, that was the first time. Remember the first time you went to her house and met her family? I think I first met her mom then. I can't remember when it was, but I came out there and I was playing with the kids. I think her mom and dad came up. I'm not sure, but I was out there playing with, with, her, with her two kids. She had two little boys, Sean and Titus. Okay, and those were Sade's children? They were Sade's kids. All right. And um, when you met her mom, tell the jury about how that relationship was and what happened. Well, I guess her mom felt like I was too old for her daughter, or however she felt. But she was, she, was, she was negative. She was negative. She was disrespectful, but I always respected her for Sade alone. And then also when I met her husband, he, he was always respectful to me. So that's his castle. He the king of his house. And I come over and I'm going to respect her whether she disrespect me or not. I still respect her. Did you go inside the house? Yes. Yeah. Um, when the mother was present, were you allowed inside the house or did you go inside the house? I went inside the house when the mother was present probably two times. No, probably. Probably, probably three times. I think we had family night one time where it was her, her mother and her husband. It was Ron and Tammy. And I think uh, Dominique was there and her grandmother was there, her mother's mom. And, and I was there, we was watching. It was movie night or something, but Sade, she was in the garage or whatever. She left me in there by myself. Um, and would you go over to the house where you would not go inside the house? You just hang outside? Yes, uh, after, after, the th after the Thanksgiving, okay. after the Thanksgiving uh, situation. Okay. Most, matter of fact, at the next day, because we went back for leftovers, after the, uh, the next day, I stopped going in there. So you started, she started living with you sometime shortly after September 16, and was she there every night? Yes, mostly. She would, she would go home every now and then. Okay. And give us an idea of what your routine was during that period of time. Uh, I, worked, I worked at Texas Chicken from 6 at night to 4 in the morning or 3 in the morning. We deliver late. And so during the day, I would just I'd basically get me some rest. Or if she wanted to do anything, we would do something together. And, and what was she doing during this time? It, when I met Sade, she, um, she didn't have a job. Okay. She, didn't, she didn't have a job the whole time I was with her. She worked one night at one of the clubs as a, um, as a bartender at one of the clubs she used to be at. She worked one night at the club, but then the next day, 
she said the dude wanted her to dress more provocative for the for the gentleman's club. He wanted her to dress more provocative. I'm like, no, you ain't got to do that. So So she never went back? No, she never went back. So she went um so I asked her, I'm like, what's your what's what what's your what what what, what uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What do the goals you have? Like, what's your long-term goal and short-term goal? She was like, her long, her short-term goal is to be a real estate agent, and her long, oh, sorry, a real estate agent. Real estate agent. Okay. And her long-term goal is to LBGQYN. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Dealing with babies, delivering babies. Okay. So, when she said that, I'm like, well, go ahead and uh, sign sign up to the class. Then she was like, right now, I'm like, yeah, right now. You said it's what you want to be. What you waiting on? We should like, I'm gonna pay for it. I said, I got to go ahead and sign up. So she uh, signed up to real estate to real estate school. And so we shot the real estate school. So did you pay for that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So she signed the real estate school. The first day I took her to school, because she told me she said she tried it before, but she didn't get it. She said the, the relationship she was getting in, the dudes she would be with, they were always always like be in the clubs or it was street dude so you know they're in the streets the clubs they doing whatever and she said she wasn't able to stay focused and she was like she just needs somebody to help her keep keep her focused so the first day i took her to school i dropped off i go home go to sleep so lunchtime 12 o'clock i come back pick her up take her to lunch drop her back off go back home go back to sleep Come back at three or three thirty to pick her up from school. Pick her up from school, and at six o'clock, it's about time for me to go to work. So the next the next day, <clears throat> so that that day when I picked up, she was like, oh, "What you was doing?" I'm like, "I'm, I'm at home sleep." So she was thinking I'm probably out here like doing stuff. I'm like, "Man, I'm not doing. I'm at home sleep. I got to get me some rest for work." So the next day when I took her to school. I brought her to school. I'm like, when you are uh, ready for lunch, I'm going to be outside. And she was like, what you finna do? I said, I'm, I'm finna sleep in the car. She's like, you finna sleep in the car? I'm like, yeah. You told me to help you keep you focused. I don't need you to worry about what I'm doing. I ain't doing that. I need you to worry about school. I'm going to be in this car asleep, waiting for you to come out. So I was sleep in the car. She come out. I take her to lunch. When she go back in, I stay sleep in the car. And when she come out when school over with, we go home. Now, did she have reason to believe that you were kind of fooling around on her? No, not at that time. No, sir. Later on? Later on, yes, sir. Okay, we'll talk about that. Now, did there come a time when you found out she was pregnant? Yes. Okay, tell the jury about that. Uh, so we had sex on September the 16th, the first day. So come, so comes October, she, October, comes October the 1st, she was like, I didn't have no period. I didn't have my period this month. So I'm like, well, when do you usually have your period? She said, round by in the 20s. So I'm like, I'm like, all right. I'm like, uh, we went and bought, what you call them? Uh, a pregnancy test. When they bought a pregnancy test, we took a pregnancy test, it came back negative. So we end up waiting like a week and took another one, and then it came back positive that she was pregnant. Okay, and so that was in October. Yes. And at some point, do you take her to a clinic to get a sonogram? Yes, we go to a clinic, and we went there like a, a, a couple times. Okay. A couple was times. Was there an occasion that you actually filmed video of, of that? Yes, we, we was live. I was live as they were doing the sonogram. We said the baby was... I said, you better get some, uh, what they said, they told us, you better get you some running shoes because this baby standing on his head. So we, I was happy. We live. We coming out. And when she comes out, when she comes out, people probably, a lot of people didn't, didn't pick up on it, but she live. She got the phone now. She's live. We get in the car. Then she's like, um, I, need, I need to check. I need to check when I conceive. And then we just going live and we kept going on about our business. What did that mean to you? I already knew. You knew what? I feel like she was pregnant before I got with her. Okay. And how'd you feel about that? I didn't care. I wanted the baby. 
Why didn't you care? Because I take care of kids that are not mine anyway. And I, I, I wanted a baby. I'm a convicted felon. I, I, I can't go adopt one. I wanted to raise a child. Judge, I now move uh, a defense exhibit Q, which. All right, this will be received without objection. State or defense exhibit number nine. I need to have it published. If you should help me. Okay, Thank sure. You. you need to hand it to the clerk just to mark it first. Oh, I'm please. sorry. Thank you. Eleven. Defense eleven. I'll momentarily admit it as 11, but we're going to check the numbers because I, I don't I don't believe this is 11. I believe this is nine. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, publish it. Oh, okay. What are we looking at, Marquis? Uh, the, the sonogram. My, my child. We have a moment, Judge. Can you hear it? Judge, can we have a moment?
and we're not seeing anything. Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> when he's born. Right. <laughs> he or she. Mm-hmm. He's doing his thing. You gotta do it. What do you measure? Tells me how far along you are. Oh. She is. They don't know yet. Last time, yeah, yeah. They didn't see anything, so we just came back because they wanted to see. Mm-hmm. Cause she was wasn't wasn't feeling well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Calculate when I got pregnant. <laughs> she told me that's a girl because she won't be still in a bit. Girl ain't acting more than boy. The lady told her to buy some track shoes. <laughs> oh, that made money on the head. <laughs> All right, y'all, we out. Cooler. <laughs> Ken, thanks, bruh. <laughs> Yee! So, okay, do I count? All right, we out of here. Mr. Lloyd, how were you feeling knowing that you were going to have a child at that moment? I was happy. Now, you mentioned that you had two older children. Yes. What are their names, and how old are they? Uh, I got a daughter. Her name is Keanu Lloyd. She'll be, 20, she'll be 25 in November, and my son, he's a junior, and he'll be 21 in November. Now, so this was approximately when this uh, this ultrasound. What was the date? Uh, approximately. I think around uh, December six. During this period of time that you were together, was there some conflict that occurred between you both about? Her marijuana use, her meeting, eating meat. Yes. Can you explain to the jury about that? Uh, basically, like I said, I, I, I don't believe in death. And I believe God created animals the same way he created us, flesh and blood. And, and even, the, even the word says that. So, and then, like, and I, I follow signs. Then when I stop eating, when I stop eating meat, and I would use the restroom, and my feces was green. So I'm looking down. You know, I've been wrong so long. Now when I got right, I'm thinking it's wrong. So I'm like, what's wrong with me? And so I'm, I'm, I'm always searching. So I start back. I start. I start back eating meat to see what it does, and it started back turning my feces brown. So I stopped back eating meat, and it started back turning green. It depends on how healthy I'm eating. And I think I read something, or. I seen, I seen something on TV where the doctor said what it says your feces means something. So I was searching. I think why, why my feces, why my feces dream. And I always teach people by nature, like we got to be one with nature. Even like the trees, the trees give off. I forgot what they, they give off something. That, that they uh, they give off oxygen. They help us breathe, and we give off something from our bodies that that they help the trees grow also. And so. And when nature, I was in prison in Colorado. I was inside a mountain, in federal prison, inside a mountain. And so I came out one day. So I'm saying to myself, I look, I just see so much life. I see so much green to my, the trees, the earth. And then it hit me. I'm like, damn. So and I felt like God was sending me the sign, like this what it is. So it hit me. When nature is alive, it's green. The grass, 
in the, in, in the trees. When nature is dead, it's brown, and they say you are what you eat, so you really are what you eat. So if you take in death, death go follow. And when you start eating how God created you to, created you to eat, your feces is going to come out green. It depends on how, how healthy you eat, because the grass and the leaves, they just don't go from green to brown. They'll go from a lighter green to a yellow to a brown. They go to die and off. So I follow signs from God. And that was a sign to me. So did, during this period of time that you found that she was pregnant, did you talk to her about your thoughts and your desire of how, um, of whether she should be using marijuana or eating meat? Can you explain what you talked to her about? And yes, uh, and even with one of the, with one of the Texas, because uh, my boss had asked me to borrow because I used to help the store out too. I would lend the money because there was, there was um, it wasn't a big franchise. I think they had like two stores. So I, w I would lend I would lend the money. I, I saved my money good. So I would lend the money to buy chicken or whatever for the store from the from the big Sam's Club, whatever we used to go at the, uh, to buy the stuff. So he asked me to borrow $600 at the time. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, I ain't, I ain't got no money on me. I usually keep a couple thousand dollars on me. So I'm like, all right, let me, uh, I got to go to the house and get it because I ain't got no money because I stopped carrying money because I had to be getting robbed. So when I go to the house, I go in the house. I, she don't know I'm coming home, though, because I, there was one of the texts I text, too, in, in, the, in the text message. So I come home, I open the door. It's a, it's a pretty scene. She on the bed. She got the plaque, what you call them, screen cards, flash cards. She studied her home, she studied her homework for real estate school. She got the music playing. I come in, damn, I'm like, all right. But then I look, I see a big ham sandwich on the bed. I'm like, what that is? Then she was like, oh, I, oh, I was just hungry and I ain't, uh, I, I ain't want to cook nothing to eat. I'm like, Charlie, you could have cooked something. I said, you could have called me. You know, I would have came and brought you anything. I'm like, that's a, that's a lame excuse. So. And I, I went back to work, and that's when, and I texted her. There was one of the texts I texted I'm like, I can't remember, it was a, like a, a, a long text. Basically, I was telling her, if you got to sneak and do stuff around me, go, go be with who you want to be with so you can be happy. If I don't make you happy, like, leave. Leave if I don't make you happy. If you feel like you got to sneak and do stuff around me. So you had caught her eating a ham sandwich, and that was something you didn't want her eating. No, sir. Because of your beliefs. Yes, sir. And you told her that if she wanted to go somewhere else, she should. Yes. All right. And so what happened after that? Uh, and I went back to work. My boss was like, he was like, he was like, bro, you know what? I don't even need the money. I got the money, I got money right here because they own a bunch of houses and apartments. So he was like, I don't even need the money. I got the money right here. Somebody came to pay. They, somebody came to pay their rent. So I'm like, all right. So that was part of the text. Why I texted I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm wondering, did God send me home to catch you eating meat? Because now I come to find out, my boss don't even need my boss don't even need the money. So you thought that was a sign from God? Y yes, sir. And that was something that happened on a regular basis. These signs of God. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you mentioned that you were robbed. Tell, tell uh, the jury about how many times were you robbed? Uh, two times. Okay. When was the first time? Uh, I can't remember. It's probably in October. Okay. Tell the jury what happened. Except, uh, uh, yeah, October. Uh, I got called out on the delivery to the uh, Ivy Lane area. So I, I went I went to take the food to the Ivy Lane area. Like I said, Tessie Chisholm. Take, test the chicken closes four in the morning. So if it closes four in the morning, we stop delivering at three. That's Fridays and Saturdays. Every other day it closed three in the morning, so we stop delivering at two in the morning. And we go anywhere. So I got called to the Ivy Lane area. I went to the Ivy Lane area to deliver some food. So I'm knocking on the door that I got sent to. No one's answering, so I'm calling the number that they called from. So while I'm on the phone calling the number, I turn around, I got a gun in my face. It's two jits, they robbing me. Okay, and what happened? So I turn around, I'm like, I'm like, what's up, jits? 
they were like, uh, they just grabbed the they grabbed the bag of food and my phone out my hand, and then they then they took off running. All right, and so that was the first time. That was yes, sir. Was that the first or second? That was the first time. Okay, so when was the second? The second time was. Um, I remember the date because I had to fill out a police report because the first time they didn't get any money so I didn't, I didn't call the police but I, I, I alerted my probation officer. So the second time I got called to the Pine Hills area for, um, on Queens, I think Queensway Road. So when I got to the house that I got called to, I'm sitting in the car, it was one, one dude, he was standing out, he was on his phone, he was like, hold up. Uh, they coming, so I'm standing in the yard wait. I'm not even paying attention because I'm on the phone with Sade. I got an iPhone, which she made me get. So I'm on the iPhone, but I got an iPhone in my pocket with the thing in the ear. I'm talking to her. Then I got another phone that I do that I use for uh, GPS. So I'm waiting. I'm talking to her and I'm waiting, but I'm not even paying attention. If I'd have paid attention, I would have seen that the door. It was a nice house. But the door, it had uh, the lock thing on it. So it wasn't even nobody standing in the house, but I, I don't notice. So I'm talking to Shadi on the phone, and then there's another jet. He come around the back of the house, and he got a gun. So I tried to, I tried to, roll, I tried to roll back, but I couldn't go too fast because the house is in cars behind me. So they run up to the car, with, put the gun in the door. They're like, give us the money. So I, I parked the car. I parked the car. I, I get out of the car. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, what's up, Jit? So other Jit, he come around the corner. They taking the stuff out the car. I'm finna try to walk up, walk up on uh, a Jit and, and take this gun from him. But the other, the other, the other Jit, he see what's going on. He was like, I'm trying to grab the gun. I'm trying to grab that gun. And he, he bad back. They were like, give us, give us the money, give us the money. So I gave him the money that I had in my pocket, which was my money and the store money, because. I probably make every night. I would make over a hundred dollars cash. I would leave every night, so I probably had like a hundred dollars that I hundred and some dollars that I probably made for that night. I probably had like four four hundred of their money. So and then Shade called the police anyway because she's hearing everything. So she called the police. She's freaking out. So Shade Shade was on the phone with you at the time while I was getting robbed. And she called the police. Yes, and she called up the Texas Chicken. Like, where did y'all send me? Well, I guess where did y'all send me? So he, that's how she, they know where I was. She called the Texas Chicken and got the address to where I was taking uh, the delivery. And did she come to the scene? Yes, she came to the scene. All right. Did she have anything with her? She, no, she told me when she left it in the car with Glenn and my brother. I'm like, I'm like, why would you bring a gun? You know, the, the, you call the police. So she told you she had a gun in the car? Yes. Did you ever see it? Yes. Okay. Whose gun was it? It was mine. Okay. Why did you have that gun, and when did you get that gun? Uh, after, the, after the first time, and then I also had it for, uh, for the neighborhood I stayed in. And also, back in, back in the day when I was young, people still think I had money. So I don't want anyone thinking I'm out here had it how I used to, and they probably want to try to come take something from me. And then I also, all on Facebook, I always, I used to like help single parents, so I would paying people car notes, light bills, phone bills, car insurance, and it's all, it's all on my page, but I always did that all my life, even when I was young. Did there, did there come a time that you started carrying a gun or guns? Yes, what yes. What was that? Uh, after the second time I got robbed, so I, I know it's a street where these, it's a house where these just be at. So I went around it the next day. I went around it the next day. And I went to the house. It was an older dude in there that know me, or, or think he know of me. So I, I, went, I went over there, so I'm like, man, what them just said? He was like, man, he was like, bro, I, I told them jits, I told them jits. Because when I guess when they robbed me, they ran to the house. And I kind of figured it, but I didn't want to tell the police on them. So I went to the house. He was like, man, I told them, them jits came out here to my man, we robbed a chicken man, we just robbed a chicken man. And so he told them, I don't know why he told them, he was like, y'all robbed a chicken man. He was like, man, y'all ass dead, y'all done robbed a chicken man. So 
Now I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, man. I said, I don't want to kill them just, bro. That shit ain't like that. I said, I was young. I used to do that little stupid, ignorant shit. I'm like, man, I don't want to kill them. I said, but tell them I want my money and my phone back. They can't be mess. I hear mess with messing with people's shit, taking taking stuff from people. You know what I'm saying? So he, he was like, all right, bro, I'm going to and I holler at him and talk to him. So I left. So now I'm from, the, I'm from the streets, even though I'm not in the streets now. So I know he done told these jits some shit which that, 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 that wasn't even my, that wasn't even something I was going to do. So now they probably thinking I'm go, I'm go, I'm trying to kill them or whatever. So I heard one of them end up moving out of town, but the other one I heard he was still around. They probably got, they probably got friends and homeboys. So I'm like, I'm sitting up. I punch a clock every day. They can call the duck and, and order a three piece and have me come in anyway and just knock me off. So I started carrying. I started carrying every, every time nightfall, I started loading up and I started carrying two guns because the guns they had had long clips hanging out of it. That's all in the, in the, uh, in the report too. Now, um, do you know whether Sade was familiar with guns? Yes. Was she? Yes, she she told me, but I I don't know how true that is right now. But she told me she had gun license. Okay. Did there come an occasion when you were in bed with her, and she grabbed your gun? And yes, we was we, we was in the bed, just she like both of us we just be talking, so she talking trash. All right, so I'm talking trash. We always playing around with each other wrestling, doing whatever. So we in the bed. I'm like, man, I'm from Carl Shores. That's a neighborhood. I'm like, Carl Shores running city. And yeah, she was like, well, I'm from Richmond Heights. Richmond Heights running. So I'm like, man, Richmond Heights. Richmond Heights soft. And then she like, shit, I'm from Richmond Heights. I put that fire on your ass. And she pulled out the pistol. So I'm looking like, man, you tripping. Was, that, was that videotaped? Yes. Yeah, we were, we were lying. We were on was Facebook, Facebook live. Yes. And then I was on federal probation, and you, so Judge, like, I, moved. Man, I, I thought I deleted that. Exhibit number P into evidence. Any objections? Ten. No, ma'am. All right, this will be received without objection as, as defense exhibit number 10. Publish it, Judge. Granted. Yeah. Now you with your face. You faker. You such a faker. Hey, I need all stylists. Call it all stylists. I need my hair done the right way at that. I don't need no crispy bangs. I don't need no imitation black spray on my hair. I need somebody who know what they doing. Cause if not, I will talk shit and I will not pay your ass. Point blank period. So if you know somebody who know somebody who know somebody that know how to do hair the right way, let a nigga know. He's not sleep. Just to let y'all know. Oh shit! I don't know what just now. Just doing. Right. Oh, we know how fast you go to sleep. On oh, everything. Keith, wake up. We've come too far. <laughs> In the night for you to go to sleep now. Poppy. Poppy Chulo. Poppy. Wake up, Bobby. Calling all stylists. All stylists. I don't do that um, black shit in my hair. So I need somebody who know what they doing, who know how to grip some hair. I just want to sew in. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. Bang. Wake up. Come on, let's go work out. Oh, 
shit. Why? It's morning time. We go work out, then we come home and go to sleep. If you go to sleep, I'm going to the gym. Debbie. You can go into the gym all you want. I want you to go with me. Mm -mm. <laughs> feel like... You tired? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely getting some sleep before I go to work. Oh, yeah, you do work today. I work today, so I'm going to sleep right before work. I'm going to be charged up. I got to work all oh, this You week. don't work until 6, though. Don't go to work till 6. Blood gang, red lights, red blanket, red pillows. We are not bloods. <laughs> Do not believe that. I'm a blood sympathizer. <laughs> I'm for Cobb Shores. Y'all already know where it is. All right, is. go back, go to sleep. Y'all know where it started at, Cobb Shores. Go to sleep. She a hater, I don't know where she from. Mm. Richmond Heights, 21 Jump Street, you already know. Willie Mays Parkway, all day, every day. And That's Richmond my life. got nothing on call for sure. You a fuck ass liar. You a fucking you you a liar. Everybody already knows. You know a liar. Nah, nah. Know. Everybody already knows. Taliban sure. gang. Taliban gang. Call for sure. Taliban gang. We some new shit. I don't know. Nah, the, 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 it's still rocking. Richmond Heights ain't never we been still, no Taliban. We still rocking over. <laughs> 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 we still rocking. What you mean? <laughs> I don't know what you talk about. You sleep. You sleep. We ain't going nowhere. Going to Taliban. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. That's a lie. Well, you saying that because them jits done got more hawks and acting stupid? I, no. I wasn't out here for that shit. No. I'd cut I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't talking about that. I'm just saying, we been about that life. I don't know. I stayed in the house. I took my ass from school to home. So I ain't, I don't know. I just hear shit. But just know. We about that life. We about that life. Cough shows at the braziest. <laughs> you been saying words with C before that. Why you say crazy? I say call Shores, yeah, let's we'll see. Bar Barbara Shores. Anybody got a bigger wreck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, mom said what you want from the store? Some chocolate built cookies. <laughs> 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 hey, he said he wants some chocolate, some chocolate chip cookies. Stop playing with me, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blood, blood, stop playing with me, blood. <laughs> Uh, calling all stylists. I need my hair done. I need to look we cute. We chilling in Boston with a bad bitch eating a box of baked beans. <laughs> 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 calling all stylists. I need this good 250 installed. If you do it right, you might get tipped right. Please don't mess this 250 though. For real. I don't need no bit that, that be cutting wefts. I need all my wealth still the same. You know what I'm talking about. If you do hair, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make sure you're doing the right thing the whole way. Yeah. Look at him. He's sleep. Y'all know how long it take this man to go to sleep? In less than three seconds, he could fall asleep. Tell him that is not normal. It's What's not Jess normal. Just doing how? We go to Jess. Where's she at? On Cologne. I, I guess I guess she supposed to be good or whatever. I don't know. Oh. I ain't never heard of Jess. Jess name ain't never ring no bells in my ears. So no. I just, I don't like when I see girls with them hard, crispy bangs. Like, oh my goodness, do not do me like that. I promise you, I will get up out your chair and walk the fuck away, and I won't pay you. I promise you, it's happened before. Check my resume. I do not play by my head. And y'all kill me. Some of y'all girls will do your home girl hair the right way. 
and probably they probably won't even pay you, but you'll fuck up the next bitch head. Where they do that at? A woman's hair is her crown and glory. Don't fuck up my head. Stop playing in people's heads. See, they ain't gotta worry about that. He wake up, throw some water on his head and come and then he done. <laughs> Out the door. He said he gonna get the dreads back. I like the low cut. And he's out of there. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> Mr. Lloyd, uh, the gun that she showed briefly that we saw in the video. Whose gun was that? Mine. Okay. Um, and where did she grab it from? Off her side, I guess, I don't know where she had it. Okay. Judge, can we come sidebar for a second? Sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. Um, Ten minutes, we'll bring you back in. All right, thank you. Okay, this is just a ten-minute recess. Mr. Lloyd, if you'll go back to the front table. All right. 